Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to start um, by saying that, it, first of all, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to be standing here today in this role, uh, to be returning to Chicago, to be returning to the Chicago Bears, the place where I started my uh, NFL coaching career 16 years ago. I want to thank uh, Matt Eberflus for, first of all, allowing me to be a part of the process of getting to this particular point, uh, going through all the other candidates, and then ultimately deciding that uh, our pairing, our partnership, would be the thing that we needed to do to take this defense to the next level and to accomplish the goals that we have as a, as a defense, as a team, and as an organization. I want to thank uh, the McCaskey family. I was here 16 years ago in somewhat of an entry-level role. I was a defensive assistant, quality control, uh, just coming into pro football. And I, even at that role, the McCaskey family got to know me. Uh, they allowed me to get to know them and to realize and to understand the legacy of the Chicago Bears. And now, having an opportunity to come back, they welcomed me back with open arms, and I'm looking forward to uh, doing my part to help us attain our ultimate goal, and that's to uh, win a championship. I also want to acknowledge um, my wife Amy and my son Ellis, who have provided unbelievable support and love for me throughout my entire career. My son was born here in Evanston. He was born just as I was leaving and transitioning to the Carolina Panthers 16 years ago. So it's really cool to now come back. He's 13 years old and for him to be a part of this situation, understand why this is a, a very special place. I want to thank Ryan Poles, the rest of our front office, um, for providing uh, the, the resources and providing knowledge and information about exactly what our plans and what our goals are with respect to uh, moving forward and how we're going to accomplish that and giving me the tools and resources. Um, it's wonderful to be back. The last acknowledgement that I want to make is I want to uh, dedicate this particular moment to my parents, John and Patsy Washington. Uh, without them, I'm not standing here today. And um, so I want to dedicate this particular moment to them. I love and appreciate them. And um, with that, I'll take your questions. Coach, with Matt Abertu is obviously maintaining his role as a play caller. Where do you see your best opportunity to come and put your imprint on this defense? Well, it, it, first of all, it's the defense. It's our system. And um, it's a system that I'm familiar with structurally. Uh, there's some things that are similar to what I've been a part of. Uh, Matt's got some really cool ideas. And so you jump in and you do, from my role, you do everything you possibly can to make sure that we perfect our system. And you bring the experiences that you've had, that I've had over 16 years in the NFL and even before that in college football to add something to inform, to maybe provide a different perspective or some tools and resources. But um, that, that's how I intend to approach it, just to come in and uh, really be a part of what we've established bring my perspective, my level of expertise, the things that I've been fortunate to be a part of in terms of, 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 of winning situations, explosive defenses, and just kind of add that to the mix and really um, collaborate with the exceptional staff that we have assembled here on defense. Were you at all uh, reluctant to take the job because of the fact that you will not be calling plays? Yeah, you know, my focus was on what the job is and as opposed to what it isn't. Um, you know, the opportunity to come here and to this organization with a defense that is clearly on an upward trajectory, that has some really dynamic performers in place with plans of obviously uh, augmenting that. Um, that's what my focus was, and uh, that's what it continues to be. I've been a play caller. I'm pretty confident that I will do that again at some point. But right now, um, I'm really confident and uh, – what Matt is going to bring to the table in that respect, and I will support him uh, as, as best that I can. What have you seen from this defense, whether it was while you were considering the job or since you've been hired, what specifically appeals to you about where this defense is headed? It's, um, number one, it's an explosive group of players. Uh, this defense was elite 
in several important categories that lead directly to winning football. Uh, making teams one-dimensional, stopping the run. We've got some really good players on the defensive line. This team is in the top two or three and taking the football away and continuing to feed an explosive offense. When I looked at that and in terms of those things being values, th those were the things that really got me excited along with the scheme and the structure of the defense. Those are the things that really got me excited about coming. Eric, what was your relationship with Matt like before you took this job? Uh, just a mutual respect. Uh, we've known each other for a number of years, and uh, uh, we, we've got a lot of people in our background uh, that we have kind of worked with. And, and um, so um, I've known Matt for a long time. We've had conversations, you know, back and forth over the years. Uh, we've talked about different things that I believe in, uh, different things that are part of his philosophy. And so it's just been a mutual respect in passing. You know, coaches have a chance to kind of uh, interact with each other at various points during the offseason and sometimes during the season. And so that's kind of where it originated from. And, and I knew that if I had an opportunity to work with him, that I'd be really excited about that. With your, what, with what your pedigree. What valuable experience have you gotten as far as the draft goes in your career? And how – what have you done to kind of get up to speed with what the Bears are, who players the Bears are scouting and, you know, decisions that they might be making in this draft? Well, all of those things are, are ongoing. You know, I've been here a couple of weeks now and, um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of meetings, a lot of discussions about, you know, where we at, where we are with the roster and um, the desired traits that we need for the players to make this particular defensive system go. And we've had, we've had extensive conversations as far as those things are concerned. We're trying to do our best in terms of evaluating who we have and trying to find the absolute best case scenario with people who are maybe available for us. What have you pedigree, learned in your with your pedigree as a defensive line coach, what entices you about working with that unit, knowing that they went big and got Montez Sweat last year, but there's also two young defensive tackles who need that teaching element that Matt was talking sure. about. Sure. We, well, at, we want to be we, – we'd like to be – we're going to be a team that, that generates pressure with our front four. We're going to build the best pass rush in football. That happens to be, you know, an area, fortunately, that I've, in an area that um, I've had tremendous success with. And um, there's – we have the, the personnel to, to get that done. We've got – um, size, speed, quickness, length. Montez, I remember Montez through the, uh, the through the pre-draft process when I was in Carolina. Really admired the traits, the mindset, all of those types of things. So you look at the people that we already have here. I mean, it's just exciting. It's exciting. Plus, we invested heavily in the draft last year with the two young defensive tackles. I happen to know them going through the draft process. So all things are just positive as far as that goes. What have you gotten previously as far as just – valuable experience or lessons learned from being part of other teams pre-draft process? Well, I mean, you, you realize that this is not an exact science that you have to, you know, it, there's, there's not one aspect of the evaluation that you can point to and say, okay, this is the thing that will determine whether or not a player has success at this level. It's, 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 it's all of these things together. It's their background in college. It's, uh, their level of discipline. It's what they. It's the production that they've been able to attain. It's the reputation that they have. It's their work ethic. It's all of these things uh, conspiring together, and then also the type of environment that you're bringing that player into. Will that locker room support and and be a part of the development of that player? And it's also a little bit of a humility. It's there's some humility involved when you come into the National Football League. You're basically starting over, and uh, what, what worked for you in college, you have to learn how to win at this particular level because of the talent that you're working against, because of the experience that you're working against, some of the things related to scheme. So I've taken all of those things and, and, and I'll continue to use those to inform that process. You could, well, you get a good idea of that at the Combine when you're talking with guys about just how much learning they're going to have to do, long, you know, any defensive player. But when you're in those meetings next week, to know what you're going to have to do as a teacher and how you're going to have to teach specific players. Do you walk away from Indy knowing kind of what the work would be cut out for you if the team drafted a specific guy? Well, it's, well, you, you take that particular point, that time, and it's just a, it's, it's a, it, 
informs the process. It's just one aspect of it. But yes, it's a, it's it's valuable in terms of getting to know the player and getting more and more information about their background. Now they're standing and sitting in front of you. You're able to de ask uh, detailed questions and get a feel for what they've gained and what they've learned coming from where they're coming from. So we'll take all that information in hand and just continue to add that to the overall profile of that individual. When you, you mentioned- You reflect back on your previous stop here and you think back to some of the players that you were uh, working with at the time and, and those units, what, what are some of your reflections and, and what are some of your fondest memories from your first stop through here? Well, um, we had a collection of defensive linemen. It was a similar philosophy. And um, they were a tough, aggressive uh, bunch that loved the game. They absolute, absolutely loved the game. Um, they were hard workers in practice. And, um, and they were a lot of fun to be around, the personalities and just the talent, the relentlessness. I mean, Alex Brown was here, Tommy Harris, Julius Peppers, and congratulations to him also. He was here. I had a chance to work with him at two different stops. You know, Anthony Adams. I mean, there was just uh, Israel Adonage, Matt Tuina. They, they were they were a great combination, a great blend of different skill sets, but with the same similar mindset. And we weren't a we were a defense at that particular time that was personnel driven and not scheme driven. And we emphasized fundamentals. And so we weren't trying to trick you with what we presented to the offense on a week on a weekend and week out basis. We wanted our foundation, our calling card, to be the fundamentals and the situational awareness and the development and winning one-on-one, -on -one. and that's what I remember about, about those individuals. Eric, you mentioned that you've called plays before and you'd like to do it again someday. Did you talk to Matt Eberflus about that and that maybe eventually this year or even next year you take over those duties of play calling? Yeah, during that process, you know, we, the, the conversations were extensive and comprehensive, and we, we touched on a lot, of, a lot of things, you know, uh, and – you know, Matt's aware of, uh, of of my background in terms of calling uh, defenses. And um, what we talked about more than anything was just how do we put forth the best scenario for 2024 to make sure our defense is going in the right direction. Matt uh, Eberflus is an unbelievable play caller. He's an outstanding play caller. And we saw the effect that that had on our team last year, especially – going down the stretch. We want to continue that. We, we don't want to stymie that momentum. We want to continue that. And my expectation, his expectation for me, is to contribute to that uh, in the planning process and in real time on game day. What makes him a good play caller from, from watching film and from just knowing him as a guy for years? Well, just, just the ability to be situationally aware and, and to understand exactly the situation that we're in and to feed the players defensive concepts that will allow us to address that situation and accomplish our goals with respect to what we're seeing first and second down. Also, you know, our priorities, we, we got to get the run stop. We have to make teams one dimensional. Uh, his play calling will feed into that, into that goal, into that value and just understanding the, the prowess and, and what we are good at as a defense and how to put players in the best position uh, to be successful. Coach Eric, when the, when, the, when the head coach and the coordinator are on the same side of the ball, sometimes confusing who does what, wh whether it's implementation of the defense or especially on game day, what will your role be? What will you, what will you do? How, how can you best make a difference? Well, just, just making sure, number one, you know, understand that Matt is also the head football coach. And so, you know, calling the defense, that's that job, that responsibility. There's a lot of details. There's a lot of nuance to that. But at the same time, he's got to make sure that the team and the decisions that have to be made from that seat are taken care of. And so for me, I will be, I will do everything that the coordinator is doing without actually calling the defense. And if he needs to hand that responsibility off to me temporarily or for a snap or two, be ready to follow up and to take that role on and to make sure that we continue to move forward in the direction that we want to go in. And so the other thing is just, you know, on the sideline during the game, just making sure that the coaches and the players are informed as far as the adjustments that we need to make and how the game is unfolding. So there's a lot of communication. There's a lot of communication back and forth uh, when we go to offense and when, as opposed to when we're on defense. So just supporting him and being of the mindset that you're the play caller.
So if there's a question that's posed, if there's some way I can support that situation, make sure I get that information to him quickly and clearly so he can make a decision. Will you be, will you be like devising game plans or, or initiating game plans or is that kind of Matt, Matt's thing? No, we, it, we from we'll be collaborating on all of those issues. And um, and certainly I'll be called upon or I'll be counted on to uh, be a part of the constructing the defense, organizing exactly what we want to do relative to different situations and just putting the entire plan together along with our staff. There'll be some collaboration there, but uh, Matt and I will work closely together to come up with the final approach 